Think you've seen it all, huh? Think you know all there is to know about Vault Hunters, Bandits, Corporations, and nobody loser types? Well, you don't know Skag Diddly. Take Promethea, for example. A civilized place, as far as planetary-sized piles of excrement go. A planet still recovering from its war with the Malawan Corporation. The rival Atlas Corporation is in bad shape. Reese Strongfork, the big shot CEO with the regrettable mustache, is scrambling. He's on the cusp of something big. But he's not the only one. And into this pressure cooker steps Dr. Anuradha Dar, genius inventor, socially awkward uh, do-gooder type. She works for Atlas, been tinkering with a big award-winning idea. Her brother, Octavio Wallace Dar, Meridian City's most well-known man, at least in his own mind, he's convinced his big break is just around the corner. And Fran Miskowitz, purveyor of Reese Strongfork's favorite Froger flavor. She's hoping for a big insurance payout after that regrettable Malawan laser incident. So, you're probably asking yourself, what makes these three so special? And the answer is nothing. Yet. You're free now. Go. Be free. Run. Run. Morning. What? I mean, good morning. Seriously. Again? Yep. Another busy day. Work, work, work. Am I right? By channeling the Iridium's energy through a multiphasic refraction lens, I can reproduce the, as yet, inexplicable powers of the sirens. Maybe not the wings thing, which is so cool, but uh, crucially, the ability to manipulate an object safely through space-time. I'm Anu, the ultimate siren fangirl, but for totally scientific reasons, I swear, and I'm so close to replicating the signature move of my all-time favorite siren, Lilith. R.I.P. Pong. <laughs> I was saying, in addition to forever altering the nature of conflict vis-a-vis -vis offering a non-lethal resolution, my device could also change the world. For the better. Imagine, a way for people to solve their problems without killing each other. I literally can't. I just have to figure out how to actually bring back the objects I faced away. And also, where they go. And also, what happens to them? Simple. Interdepartmental demonstration scheduled for two weeks from today. Dr. Anuradha Dar, signing off. Oh, snap. Two weeks? Really? It's going to be ready by then? You always seem so hesitant to put a timeline on this bad boy, so you know, two weeks. Wow. It is. Or it will be. Surely two weeks is enough time for a huge breakthrough, right? Probably, right? Sure. I should have said three months. What was I thinking? All I've got to do is just figure out the next step. That's it. There's got to be something I'm missing. Figure it out with, like, your intuition or with your tech goggles? I would like to think both. Maybe start with the tech goggles, though. There's a button? On the side? 
Okay, goggles. Let's try a diagnostic. So, for starters, I should probably put an actual power source in there, huh? You needed the goggles for that. Now, where did I put that iridium ore? It'd be great if you found that iridium shard because you're the only person who knows where it is. I don't know why I ever thought a Jabberman translator was a good idea. It worked, sure, but it turns out all they want to do is fornicate and fling feces. What a waste of time. Now that I look at the Jabberman translator with fresh eyes, I realize I may have made a miscalculation in the translation matrix. For all I know, they could have been spouting philosophy. Would a clearer headed Anu have stored the iridium in here before calling it tonight? And would a clearer headed Anu remember the code to her safe for once? Better grab some money for lunch while I've got this bad boy unlocked. Did you say lunch? You buying? Hiding the key component to your life's work from yourself? <laughs> you are one eccentric scientist. Happen to have the iridium ore in your pocket? What? No, of course not. Why would I keep iridium in my pocket? Your pocket just seems full. <laughs> oh, don't get cheeky with me, boss. Not unless you mean it. What? No. In the toolbox, maybe? My trusty tools. So much potential for science in these simple implements. And what's that? Oh, Anu, really? Got you. 
left the rare and incredibly expensive ore inside the toolbox again, didn't you? Uh, maybe. Love that hum. It's like it's singing. Like a siren song? Like a song of the future. A better future with less bloodshed. Where we use innovation and technology to help people and protect life, not casually destroy it as a matter, of course. Like... like... Don't oh, you know? I know. Like profit-focused warmongers with no moral compass beyond the almighty dollar. Exactly. A.K.A. Atlas's motto. No cruelty. No killing. No compromise. You're a revolutionary, boss. Ooh! Who are we rising up against? <laughs> Not that kind of revolutionary, Timmy. Don't worry. I won't. Revolutions typically generate a 30% increase in market share. Good for business! In fact, the only thing better for business than revolutions are the vicious campaigns of suppression by the ruling elite that inexorably follow. You make it sound like we're war profiteers. We do manufacture weapons. For now, Fong. For now. Right. Anyway, are you here for something in particular, Timmy? Yes, please. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Strongfork to inquire why our company's test subjects are somehow... liberated. I'm sorry. Test subjects? The Javers. Liberated. Correct. Your comprehension level is impeccable. You should have no trouble explaining why the Javers are loose. Again. They're currently running amok down the laboratory hallways. The janitorial staff is prepping for what I like to call... Go Jabber Grabber time! All right, it was me! You caught me! I did it! I let the Jabbers go! Yes, we know. I apologize if my tone was misleadingly chipper instead of appropriately accusatory. Wait, what? If it's any consolation, the footage from this instant was captured at a much more flattering angle than the footage of you releasing the Jabbers those other times. Don't they deserve to be free? Oh, I'm not authorized to dispense ethical judgments about Atlas policies. Well, now that we've got that straightened out. Ah, Dr. Dar, you have an update to your calendar incoming. It's an appointment with Mr. Strongfork. Oh, uh, I can check my schedule to see. The appointment is now. Oh, and, uh... What is it regarding? It's a reprimand session for Mr. Strongfork to reprimand you. Oh. Wait. Better not go empty-handed? Good luck. Octavio. Oh, Nedster! School's out already? Hey, Papa Girardi! I can smell your space calzones from here! Ah, thanks! I, I need a new name for them. Might also need to stop doing that problematic accent. Yeah, I, I know. Miss Johnson, did you get a cybernetic leg? That thing's straight fire. Jesse, 
How's it hanging, dude? Oh, you know, Octavio, it's a brand new day filled with endless possibilities and excitement. Sounds like it. New Agorex, who it is? <laughs> Another new device? Come on, Octavio. It's Radon. But listen, I'm almost done with this demolition job. <laughs> Wanna head to Paco's for tacos? Sure. Why not? Paco's tacos haven't hurt anyone. Yet. I'll see you there. Octavia. God, jeez! I anticipated your arrival and have been waiting in a location that would not obstruct others. No, no, I, I was scared. <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> your biometrics appear otherwise. Your voice resembles a nine-year-old girl's. Nine-year... <clears throat> nine-year-old girls are the future, so thank you. I acquired the publication you requested. Come on! Your biometrics read extreme disappointment. It's Forge's super successful Dirty 30. It lists the planet's most promising, innovative entrepreneurs, and I'm not on it. Again! Have you accomplished some extraordinary business transaction to warrant your acknowledgement on this list? I survived Malawan's invasion. And I'd like to think that my social influence has kept this city together after the war left it in damn near ruins. No would have been a more succinct answer. Look, I'm working on it. Why? This list is merely the opinion of other humans. You should not value it. As a machine, I find this accolade pointless to strive for. Getting on Forge's super successful Dirty 30 is a lifelong dream. It's irrefutable proof to the rest of the world that Octavia Wallace Star exists. That I'm a somebody. I know you're somebody. Yeah, but you're an assassination bot, which makes it weird. Perhaps you are disappointed. But look on the bright side. Many of these celebrated humans have contracts on their heads. Bivington Bradwick, for example, has numerous bounties on his life, but no assassination bot can kill him. He is rich and important enough that he never has to leave his home or do anything for himself. You, however, are not on this list. You're anonymous, unrecognized, a nobody. This is beneficial for your survival. But not beneficial for my image. I mean, all the best business people have probably at least killed someone to succeed. Something to warn a bounty anyway. I'm doing whatever it takes to maintain appearances. Come on, if there was a list of all the best assassination bots, wouldn't you want to be on it? No. I pour my heart and soul, confide my lifelong ambition to be on this list, and you act all superior robot on me. But I am a superior robot. I have killed 963 people. You have killed no one. Don't diminish my potential. It's not that I couldn't kill. I could! If that's what it took. Despite your erratic behavior today, I am in need of your assistance. Sorry, I'm busy networking, innovating, shaking hands. After Malawan killed nearly half the merchants in the city, we've all needed to make new contacts. This would be an actual job, with money. Your various business concepts lack like financing, marketing, public appeal. Kidding! <laughs> I'm not busy. Totally pranked you. <laughs> You just got Octavio. Interesting phrasing. Perhaps I'll adopt that. Uh, well, that's kind of my thing, but... Now, on to business matters. You will aid me, as you have before, in confirming the names of my targets before I shoot two ion slugs into their brain. You know how to talk. You have a mouth. You will prove exceptional. Hell yeah. I love helping you with your work. Plus, I love money. 
We all love money. Whatever it takes to get my business off the ground. Do you actually have an idea for your business? Tons! A few. I'm working on it. and rat's ass. Congratulations, Francine Miskowitz. It has been 90 days since your last uncontrolled outburst of rage. All right. All right. Let's make it to 91. Get to work. Take pride in your ability to maintain a positive attitude even though a Malawan space laser decimated your Frogert shop and subsequently reduced its Acronet Yowl rating by 3.5 stars. Thank you, Sponsorbot. Your Yowl rating is now negative 3.5 stars. Thank you, sponsor bot. As soon as the insurance money comes in, this place will look good as new. Warning, do not think about your malfunctioning TDR appliances, for which you still owe the TDR Corporation 600,000 galactic credits. Think about the fact that these machines are also licensed from Dior and thus cannot be sold. As soon as the insurance fella approves my claim to fix this place up, I'll have Dior paid back quicker than a ch ch reload. Some guns reload very slowly. Thanks for reaching out, sponsor bot. You're my rock. It's a bad metaphor. If you're going to do metaphors, be better at them. Oh, connection's gone squirrely. Can't hear you. Talk later. Everything is going to be just fine. My new slaughter matic combat vegetable knife slices artichokes as easily as arteries. <clears throat> We're not open yet. And... Lore. How's business treating you, handsome? Not bad. If there's two things you can count on Prometheans buying, it's bullets and brew. Place looks as charming as ever. I thought the insurance money was supposed to come through by now. Claims guys coming by today, they've been jerking me around, saying I have to pass some sort of final interview to get my cash. How dare they not trust a kind old lady like you? Want me to shoot them? It's been a while since I shot anyone. A week, at least. Still, I'm a steady trigger, so long as I've got some caffeine in me. Yeah, go for it. There are precious few problems a couple of well-placed bullets can't solve. They teach you that in the military? If by teach, you mean repeatedly scream at me, and if by military, you mean mom, then yes. Right. Well, just tell me who to shoot and where to shoot them, and I'll have it done by end of business today. Thanks for this, by the by. Samesies. Uh-oh. Looks like the morning rush has arrived. I'm outie. All right, all right, all right. Time to make the Frogerts. Morning, welcome to Franz Frogert's. What can I get you today, hon? Uh, a large peanutty buddy with sprinkles.
Here you go, sweetheart. Whoa, this looks incredible, Fran. I know, babe. Oh. There you go. 